John is uh, available tonight, so we're going to sit in as chairman. Uh, so we're going to approve some minutes from there. Look at some minutes from September 21. Yeah, only a little small change in there, which I assume she made, and then was, uh, let me double check just to be sure. Got that, it's still on your copy. Yeah, let me double check on that. It was just a, it was the vote that was, uh, should have been right. Yeah, she got it. Okay, I'll make a motion to approve it. Second. Point? Yes. DJ? Yes. Some regular reports. Uh, Emmerich, you wanna? Yeah, just, just real quick go over, please over a couple of things here. Um, <clears throat> as far as next year, for our capital improvement projects, uh, that was handed in uh, in a timely fashion. We got that in in September. Um, as you know, we are funded for the total reconstruction of Stafford Road between Messenger and 44, so we're going to go ahead with that. Um, what we're doing as well, we're doing Bartholomew Road between Thorpe and Munn. That road was, uh, we actually built that road ourselves, winding and everything in 2007. Uh, they give us a 12-year a life cycle on that, so next year it'll be uh, 14 years old. And right, it's, it gets a lot of traffic there, high traffic now, so we're going to take care of that road. And then Leland Trail, which is right around the corner from Bartholomew, we're going on proximity. Uh, that was uh, built in 2002, and that'll be, uh, it's 18 years old, be 19 years old next year when we tackle that, so that's on there. Then our total budget, we're looking at about 975000 which is always where we're right about, somewhere around there. Um, the new truck that uh, we're anticipating, uh, delivery of that truck to us in January, uh, beginning or mid-January. Uh, up until then, we will be using uh, the old truck for King until then. Uh, and I don't believe we're going to off that truck until after the season's so over. We found that worked pretty well last Thank time. You. Yeah, I <laughs> yeah, did that. Uh, the other thing I have, uh, Mr. Vanoy, today is his last day on his 90 day probation. So he's off of it tomorrow, just to let you guys know that. And that's all I got for him. Just look up. Yeah, we got to get him signed up with health insurance, so we should stop in and see what he Right, yeah, yeah. I'll let them know. Okay. Thank you. Um, Chief, anything going on? Mm, another vote for 11, November 3rd. We started putting some signs up. Yeah, I saw that today. Do uh, you got any left? I'll put one up on 44. Yeah, uh, I probably do. I'll get it to you. Uh, Jim Dixon is going to tell us what's going on up there at the under construction pavilion project. Um, it's coming along real well. We are today, as of today, we're 75 percent covered. Uh, tomorrow we'll be 100 percent with the wood decking. We got rained out Friday. Um, this wood decking is something you don't want to get wet. You want to get it up there and get it covered. So everything we put up. So far, we've covered with ice guards so it doesn't get wet. And tomorrow, they'll finish up the wood decking, and probably Wednesday, Thursday, we'll start the metal decking, the metal roofing. How long will the metal roofing take? A week. And then the last thing will be the stone on, on the piers, and that'll take another week, depending on the weather. We're starting to get into some rain days now. We haven't had one until last Friday. It's that, amazing. That was unusual to go. I know. <laughs> you know, everybody kept looking. I need a break. When's it going to rain? <laughs> Keep working. But last Friday, it was such and go, and we just decided it isn't worth it to put 
bare wood out there and let it get wet. So we stopped and we hit it again today. So it's come come along real nice. Electrical's going last then. Yeah, the stove will be a lot. I don't want anybody banging into it with the equipment. We got a, we got a panel. For All the equipment will be gone overhead. You know, it'll be running uh, electric also tomorrow. That was going to be Up in the rafters, get all that done. They got a lift there. So everything up high will be done before we do that stone. I don't, I'm afraid somebody will bang into it with a lift or something and damage it. And, and we can work on it under cover. Whether it rains or not. Of course. That's that's the turning point when you get under cover. Yep. That's all I have. All right, well thank you. Uh Mike got anything for tonight? No, nothing that isn't covered in the new business. Christina O'Brien called me from Cambridge. Uh she couldn't get a hold of you for some reason today. So it looked like the key thing, of course, we canceled or I'm going to ask you to fill in some of these blanks because you were you're the you're the guy on this. We canceled or postponed those fireworks. What we what was the official uh, verdict on those? Official verdict was they were canceled. Canceled, but we still had to pay a bill because it was cheaper to do that than it was to postpone. Correct? Something like that. No, but we were uh, we were contracted for uh, three years for not because we'd already we'd already con we did a three year contract yeah. for the uh, fireworks so the cancellation there was still a cancellation fee on there and then we owed a percentage of that. All right, so it sounds like the total from what she told me was sixty seven hundred dollars, of which we're responsible for thirty six percent of that. Okay, okay. that was my note. Then that's. What it was, and then what she told me is there's a very good chance it's not set in stone yet, but due to some changes in uh, laws because of COVID this year, because everybody got canceled, they might take this payment as a credit towards next year. That's what she was saying. It's not official true. yet, but and we're all hopeful that next year this you know things will get somewhat back to normal and we'll do fireworks so we knew we were going to have to take the hit i mean there's yeah. there no way we could do the fireworks even if we didn't have the thing at the school you'd still have people clustering around somewhere trying to watch this canceling so I, it was the only option i think the other key part of what she was telling me is they're going to pay that bill fred and they're going to bill us they're going to send us an invoice for that yeah. so. um other thing I had was uh, uh, got up on the roof at Adam Hall, legit, with the roofer, and there was four or five of us up there, and uh, we found some problems up there. A couple of it, it, some of it is just design because the roof is too flat, uh, and then there was a, a problem at the peak. There was we uh, did a small section. So, strange shape. It's on the west side of the building, just beyond the peak where you go in the main entrance. There's a flatter part there that did not have any ice guard under it. And that was that was the, the leak that was showing up at the peak that I talked to you about at that one point. The other one is there was a dimple in the roof, that one got taken care of. That was also to the west side of the building. Also on the west side of the building, of course this is where the driving rains are coming from too, mm -hmm. so it's gonna find holes there faster. Uh, it was at the valley where they overlap shingles and the roof's too flat to do that really. I know aesthetically I guess that's what, and Jim you're gonna know these terms. I don't know, what do they call that? when they overlap the shingles rather than have the sh exposed flashing. That's what they do. They yeah, just... there's a term for it that that roofer was talking about. I don't know what it was. But uh, it's just too flat. There's, there's two roofs meeting right there. And when you interlace the shingles like that, it just kind of slows the flow right there at the valley. And what it was doing was just washing over, coming back. Yeah, that's what it was. It's a shiplap yeah. joint. Yeah, that's a lap joint? Yeah. Shiplap. Shiplap, okay. Yeah. 
Uh, and, and the roofer himself said, that, you know, aesthetically this is what people do, but generally you do it on a roof with more pitch. Mm -hmm. So that's what we got. So they did that. I think the bill was 800 bucks. I think they re uh, caulked around all the cupolas and everything. That's uh, what you got to do is caulk it all Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I approved that, and, and that, that got done. That, in fact, they got on that the last day before the rain came. I think it was Thursday they did that. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make sure, Emmerich and Nancy and I have been talking, to, and I think this came up in a meeting as well, uh, we're going to make sure everything's tight, that we're in good shape there. And those ceiling panels in there, which I don't think were, I, they're original from when we first opened it, when we first did the rehab. So they're what, 15 years old now? Like that. Yeah, they, they look pretty nasty. They're bowed, yeah. And there you, you stand up and of course we're on ladders looking at stuff the other day. And every one of them's got a, like they do, you know, they got a little bowl in them. So we're going to look at replacing those. And really 15 years out of those is pretty normal, you know. So yeah. I, I don't know, there's, uh, Emmerich's done a little looking at it and, and we don't exactly have a price yet, but uh, I'm sure we'll have that for the next meeting. I'm sure there's a good, better, best you know, delineation on those things too, so. But that's what that's what they do, they're just... They sag. They sag, yeah, yeah, yeah. every one of them's got sag. Yeah, the temperature above the tile is different to the temperature below it. And that's what causes that... Well, in 15 years in yeah. gravity. Yeah. You know. It should be two by two tiles, what it should be, instead of two by four. Those are two by And Armstrong makes a tile called Ceramigard that you can stand on it and it won't bow. It's really, really good stuff for you. You could just use uh, drywall. You could cut drywall and put drywall up there, painted drywall. It's the cheapest replacement if you got two guys that can do that. They're all the same size. Well, we're gonna with the tile, you know, the tile you buy, it's already sized, so you don't have to do anything but just remove and replace. And that's you know, with a standard framework, hold up that kind of weight compared to the tiles. Yeah, for, it should. You have to check the hanger wires to see. How close they are. If they're four foot on center on the mains, it'll yeah, be so okay. But I, but so this is what you really need. Two by two, all. two by two won't sag near as fast as two by four because of the span. You know? Oh yeah, I, yeah, I get that. And it's the same price. Uh, yeah, so, I get that. But then we got we got to change all the grids then too. The only thing you got to do is add crusties, okay. two foot crusties. That's all you got to do. So yeah. would those be? We don't know without looking, but uh, would they would they be? No tools required? Snap no in. tools required, yeah. They should, should they be should compatible. The ends should snap together into the mains. Well, we'll look at that. We, look don't, we don't have a count on them or anything. Yeah, so look at the end design of one of the pieces and it'll tell you who made it. It's either Armstrong or, or non products. Yeah, because something like this has a lot better look than the full size ones, I think. Well, this is called tegular. This is a, a rabbited edge. You can see it drops down below. Mm -hmm. that, that doubles the price automatically to do that versus a standard flat lay-in tile. This is non-directional fissure is what that's called. All right, we'll look into some so options. Decisions. We'll look into some options is what we'll do. But that's, uh, we'll make sure it looks right first. Um, that's really all I have. Fred, what do you got? Um, a couple of resolutions for you. Also have your uh, regular reports in front of you, your appropriations summary report, fund summary report, revenue summary report, and a payment listing of warrants. Sixty forty through sixty sixty three, totaling sixty five thousand five hundred thirty seven dollars and sixteen cents. Um, First resolution is for supplemental appropriations. This is resolution 2020 and um, I'll read it for the record. Be it resolved by the Board of Trustees of Auburn Township, Jolly County, Ohio, that the following supplemental appropriations are necessary. $4,500 to fire levy account 2191-12323 repairs and maintenance to pay for door repairs and HVAC maintenance. 
$30,400 to road and bridge account, 2031-330-360 contract with services to pay our crack seal contract price with Aramark. That's, those are the same supplemental appropriations on it. Do you have those in resolution form, Fred? Yes, 2029. to adopt resolution 2029 supplemental appropriations. I'll second. The next resolution that I have is, I'm sorry, uh, Mike? Yes. DJ? Yes. 2020-30 is the resolution number. Um, and this is to make appropriations within the coronavirus relief fund that is um fund 2272 you'll see in front of you that there's a financial worksheet and we have uh seventy two thousand five hundred ninety five dollars of uh, coronavirus relief money through the cares act and distributed through the County Auditor. Um, I have, I'm recommending the following appropriations. Supplies and materials. Um, under uh, administration in the amount of $5,000. And I should explain that the way that this fund is set up, it basically has um, accounts under it that are similar to our current funds. So we're stating we're going to put this in for the city fire house, we're going to put this in for administration. So there's $5,000 for supplies and materials um, in the administrative area account. Uh, $25.95 for other expenses in administrative. The bulk of it, we're looking at uh, improvements uh, to existing uh, structures. That's fifty thousand dollars, and fifteen thousand dollars for machinery and equipment uh, to help improve those structures to make them more hygienic and usable for the public. And PJ can explain some of the ideas that we. Yeah, once again, we're going to double check and make sure that everything's appropriate for this CARES Act. Uh, we've, uh, and this has come up before, but uh, this could be uh, uh, kind of open the door to maybe uh, water and restroom facilities. And, and it won't pay the whole thing, or not at all, at the park. It's not going to pay for the whole thing. Uh, we're going to meet with a well dr driller tomorrow and just kind of get the lay of the land. I'm sure he's going to have to pull up comparables and everything and see how deep he's got to go. But we should be able to come up with some type of price for that. We're looking at uh, rather than heating the building, which is going to you know would have to theoretically be part of this. I guess there's a well, I built a farmer thing 30 years ago, but they've obviously improved technology now, like for parks and things that are closed in the winter. So you can easily, simply shut the thing down without any wintertime freeze damage. That's what we're going to look into. Uh, the other thing, I don't know if we can come up with, uh, we could probably get an estimate, Fred. Uh, we've got to bring a sewer line up there. These are just thoughts. These are not anything yeah. we're stuck in stone with doing here, but these are just the thought Fred and I kind of brainstormed a little bit. That was a scary thought. But, uh, yeah, and either way, getting the, you know, at least getting the pricing on the sewer line and uh, that, having your water up there, I mean, for... It, it's been, it's probably overdue to do some water up there. Yeah. Well, especially if they're telling you you're supposed to, you know, 
you know, I, I think water up there and get it into the building, at least looking like a, a hot water tank too, just for sanitation purposes, for at least a hand washing station where you have hot and cold water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Put that all as part of that package. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I mean, we could eventually replace the porta potties with you know, real bathroom. That one. Of course, you know, we'll, we're going to have to work with the health department. What uh, the size of whatever line we take up there, and what kind of usage we anticipate, and things like that. Uh, so it's there's some hurdles to get that to an estimate point in the next two weeks. Uh, that's going to be tough. Yeah. Um, you know, well, I think we, you know, at least look at some individual uh, items like, you know, getting the well. Yeah. Well, that yeah. that's standalone. Well, that's uh, something yeah. that has to be done. So. Yeah, that's kind of. Right. Whatever yeah, at least we can. I mean, at, least, at the very least, starting out, we can at least have a place to hook up a hose and wash things off up there. Right. And open to suggestions. That's, you know, might think of well, something. Nancy was mentioning that to me today, and I thought that was a great idea. Yeah. Uh, I know some township, I, I'm not going to name them, but they replaced their floor in their office building. Now, how that fits under the CARES Act, I don't know, but... Uh, I don't know if the ceiling in Adam Hall would apply for that. It's a question got to be asked. Yeah. Uh, again, been there to ask the question. Mm -hmm. uh, we also looked at um, hand sanitizing stations, and uh, Nancy did get an estimate on that to install more of those, um, particularly at the park and Adam Hall and other locations. There was also some discussion of uh, installing no-touch faucets and um, and toilets at Adam Hall, possibly. There's, I think it's just a matter of installing the valve on the, on the toilet. Mr. Dixon would know more about that than I do. So <clears throat> the resolution is 2020-30. And um, I'll read it into the record. I think the appropriations that I recommended are broad enough that they could be used for all the things we discussed. Or more. So, and, more. Okay. and things can be reappropriated. Um, so it would read, be it resolved that the Alder Township Board of Trustees hereby adopts the following appropriations and and request that the county auditor certify the fund revenue and appropriations. Yeah, so moved. Second. Mike? Yes. EJ? Yes. That's all that I have. Okay. Um, we discussed the park. Ask again. Proxy for, vote for the. Yeah, I'm getting to that. Going to check them all off here. Ask again for consideration for support for the fire levy and the road levy. And let's see. We had no peck was here with that no knock program. Uh, kind of ties in nicely with our uh, transient vendor thing under zoning permits and. Uh, there's, uh, they would gather information that would be available to us. I think he said weekly. Members of month there weekly. But uh, yeah, so it applies to transient vendors and solicitors. And we've taken the form and uh, put it into uh, filled in the blanks with Auburn stuff. So the resolution itself is now 2027, requiring the registration of transient vendors in Auburn Township's Do Not Knock Registry Program. So this is to adopt that one that we talked about last week. Second. Um, Mike? Yes. Yes.
Um, NOPEC's going to hold their annual meeting November 10th. I don't know if it's virtual or normal, but uh, we uh, need to adapt as. Is this a resolution, Fred? No, it's just a motion. Um, Bill Coons, South Russell Mayor. Uh, has made himself available to vote as our proxy from Jogger County. And I'm going to make a motion to uh, and Bill Coons as our proxy vote. Second. That meeting. Mike? Yes. PJ? Yes. Uh, let's see, what's the other one? Uh, 2028. That's from the auditor, right? I already did that. Did she give you a copy of that? She did not. Accepting amounts and rates, which is usually done that comes from the auditor's office. We already, we already. We did that. Yeah, we did do that. I don't know why it's on the agenda. We did do that because that makes the assumption that the renewal, fa renewal fails, and then they adjust it after the election. There's another one comes out that should pass. Yeah, I know we did that because we had yeah. that discussion. John was here. Yeah. Bottom of the agenda, I'll take a question if I've got one. Seeing none, a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second.